Hello, I'm Dr. Jim Coyle, and I'm an instructor for social work practice with families. This tutorial focuses on fundamental concepts for working with families. And I'd suggest that as we go along, that you jot down notes for yourself about your ideas, your questions, your reactions, because we're going to be talking about this in class as well as have uh, some uh, small group exercises about this content. It's important to notice the family context when you're working with families, because families may have different explanations for the problems that they have. Some of those explanations may focus on the individual, on the identified patient, such as a child, or uh, someone who's not carrying their own weight, who's absent from the family, such as a parent when they lose their job and the family feels okay, that the, everything would be resolved, if just this person got a job. On the other hand, some explanations may focus on the family, such as parenting methods or child developmental stages, role changes. The family may not be coping well with external stressors. There may be family arguments that are related to family subsystems, such as boys versus girls or parents versus children or blended family conflicts. Families who present individually focused problems may expect the worker to fix the individual. Well, that could have some pros and cons. It's simpler, it is clearer, that's what the family wants. And in some situations, it may be uh, necessary for a family member who has a mental illness. The um, individual treatment for that mental illness may be the primary uh, treatment need. On the other hand, family focus may require members working together, which also has pros and cons. Uh, when you have People working together, it's generally more powerful and they can do more. Although when you have um, trying to implement interventions that involve the whole family, that can be much more difficult. Notice that sometimes individual client problems may really be about families. So an individual client may uh, present marital or relationship problems or may talk about parenting concerns or may talk about how family issues influence their depression or anxiety, how intergenerational conflicts or an elderly parent living in the home uh, may be related to the family issue. And so it may indicate that working with the family may be more productive. Although one thing to really recognize here is, is that working with the family changes the client because a family goal isn't necessarily going to be the same goal that the individual may have. Family characteristics are important to look at and they involve structure and roles, family rules, boundaries, and hierarchy, feeling expression, family cohesion, family life cycle economic circumstances, family culture, beliefs, spirituality, and an ecological perspective since families composed of individuals, but also influenced by extended family and community. It's important to look at the following uh, uh, family characteristics in order to really understand how families function. First, their structure and roles. Family membership usually refers to the people who reside in the home, although it can include other caretakers or intergenerational family members. The boundaries, the hierarchy, the coalitions that link them together and their roles, which may be varied and may sometimes be shared, but also identify how the functions of the family are uh, uh, operate. So there may, there's certainly parents and children, but there could also be income producer or a cook or a shopper or a nurse. Uh, there could be a rule maker. There could be a problem solver. There could be a social director. There are very, many varied roles that families use, and sometimes they may work really well together. Sometimes they don't. Systems theory is a really good theoretical perspective for understanding how these family interactions. In particular, some uh, concepts really related to families, really helpful for 
understanding families is homeostasis, which is the balance between family members. And it's important to recognize that this doesn't mean that's the healthy functioning. It's just a predictable balance that may be really functional for them or dysfunctional for them. Morphogenesis is the family's ability to adapt to the challenges that they are experiences, where equifinality acknowledges that there's more than one way to reach an, an outcome that's uh, preferred by the family. Wholeness suggests that the sum is more than the parts. And this is particularly important when working with families since they're more than just a collection of individual members. How they connect with one another, their structure, their relationships make as just as important as what the individual characteristics of each member are. Finally, circular versus linear communication is important. We certainly recognize in linear communication, we see how A influences B and influences C, and B influences C. But in families, it's really easy to see that there's a circularity to that because A may influence B, but B also influences A. And B may influence C, but C influences B as well as A. And A will influence C directly. So it's really important to recognize that arrows that show influence are never just single-sided, that they also, uh, that the circularity is something that you can see happen in families. There's uh, quite a number of different family relationship patterns. Families may be enmeshed or disengaged. Uh, keep in mind that enmeshed doesn't mean close. It means that people don't have distinguishable aspects of themselves. It means that they can't be separated. They're totally dependent. Whereas disengaged is not the same as autonomous. It means that they are disconnected. They have little ability to connect with one another. Notice that the optimal tends to be in the middle. Families can also experience triangulation. Certainly within family members with the most common pattern being a child triangulated with parents, but it can also happen with an outside person or situation such as work or um, alcohol being uh, triangulated in a, in a marital relationship. Gender roles and inter, 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 intergenerational patterns influence relationships in the family. Family life cycle transitions also influence relationship patterns. Initially, there's just the couple, but when children come, there tends to be more focus on caring for the children who aren't able to care for themselves. And as children grow, particularly as they become teenagers, their responsibility and their involvement in family decision-making and family activities begins to change. And when it comes time to launch children, there's a recognition that launching them is the first step of them beginning that family life cycle for themselves. It's also important to recognize that in retirement, it's not just individuals who are uh, who experience changes during retirement, but the couple and other family members that may be living at home. Feedback loops um, are a way of maintaining family relationship patterns, and they're maintained by positive or negative reinforcement. Although it's important to recognize positive is not good reinforcement or healthy reinforcement. It means positive reinforcement means that whatever the behavior that we're talking about, when it's positively reinforced, it encourages it to continue, whereas negative reinforcement encourages it to discontinue or to end. We're going to talk more about this type in process versus content. Looking at the family's cohesion and their emotional expression is also an important aspect of identifying what's happening in the family. Cohesion is about family's connectedness and their ability to see themselves as, as together as part of a family. Notice the family tone, is it competitive? Are, are they independent or are they more dependent or a combination of the two? Are rules more authoritative or laissez-faire? How do they nurture one another? What, is, what are the strengths and limitations of the parental coalition? 
is the feeling expression in the family open or closed? What are family rituals and traditions? And do, how do gender differences influence the family's togetherness, their links, as well as their emotional expression? As I mentioned before, process is very important when looking at families, probably more important than looking at just the content. Content is the discussion topic or the identified problem, such as mom cuddles, coddles the children while, while father's too rigid, or children refuse to follow rules, or we've tried everything and nothing works, which unfortunately often leads to a, well, what have you tried discussion, which is a series of content-focused discussions. Now, notice when you focus on process, which is how the discussion occurs or the family patterns that tend to be similar, no matter what topic or what content the family is talking about, that begins to change. We may see parents disagreeing and children taking sides. We may see the ideal versus the problem child or the ideal versus the problem parent. You may also see scapegoating, scapegoating that uh, we've tried everything may really mean that when uh, we tend to give up when things get overwhelming. And notice that a discussion about how difficult that must be and how we might be able to find ways to help them so that they don't feel like they need to give up is generally going to be much more productive than trying to have a discussion with them about whether they have identified the correct activity or behavior to handle whatever the problem is. An ecological perspective says is not just about how society, community, and family influences individuals. It acknowledges that each level is connected with the others. So when you're working with families, it's important to notice how individual strengths and limitations influence families, but also how external levels influence families, such as uh, extended family or community groups or social policies, uh, culture, as well as possibly institutional racism and oppression. Notice that when we talk about how these influence families, that goes above and beyond how it influences the individuals because helping the family focus on these influential factors together is generally stronger than helping each individual member of the family cope with them by themselves. Social constructionism is also an important and helpful theoretical perspective for working with families. It says that people develop a knowledge of the world in a social context and that much of what we perceive as reality depends upon shared assumptions. Consider how the definition of family illustrates social constructionism because we define families in very many different ways. Consider how family stories, which are subjective as opposed to objective reality, influences the meaning of family dynamics and interactions. I'd like you to consider how the Hoover family from the movie Little Miss Sunshine influences, uh, they illustrate the family characteristics that we've been talking about. So we have the couple Richard and Cheryl, Dwayne who's Cheryl's son, Olive who's Richard and Cheryl's daughter, grandpa, and Cheryl's brother, Frank, who just arrived to, to stay with the family. As you watch these particular clips, and I'll put the uh, links in the comments below, jot down a description of what you see the problem is, or what are the influencing factors? What do you see as the primary family structure, dynamics, interaction patterns? Because we're going to have a, a small group discussion in class where you'll talk with your small group members about this. Consider what you've learned from this tutorial, from the readings, from the video. What questions do you have? How will you get the answers? And consider what you'll share during class. For example, something that really made sense to you, a client example that illustrates what you're learning or connections between past and present learning. 
I'm looking forward to talking with you about this during class.